Innal hamdalillah nahmaduhu wa nasta'inuhu wa nastaghfiruhu wa nu'minu bihi wa natawakkalu alayhi wa na'udhu billahi min shururi anfusina wa min sayyiati a'malina man yahdihillahu fala mudilla la wa man yudlil fala hadiya la wa ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wahdahu la sharika la wa ashhadu anna muhammadan 'abduhu wa rasuluhu ikhwata al-iman إن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي أدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشار الأمور مودفاتها وإن كل محدثة بدع وكل بدعة دلالة وكل دلالة في النار فلإياض بالله عز وجل All praises and adorations are due to Allah سبحانه وتعالى the Lord of the universe the compassionate the creators of the the creator of the heaven and earth Allah سبحانه وتعالى our God, our Creator, our Benefactor, we praise Him, we give thanks to Him for His numerous blessing upon every one of us. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala khalaqa samawati wal arda bi ghayra amadin. He created the earth and the, and the heaven without any pillars. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is our Benefactor, is the sustainer of the heaven and earth. We praise Him a lot and we give thanks to Him, we beseech Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, to continue send his bl uh, blessing upon the soul of our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. It's also his family and those who continue to remain on his path to the day of resurrection. I pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to count you and I among those people. My dear brothers and sisters in faith, uh, uh, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. After I've greeted you with the best greeting, uh, to remind ourselves uh, that we are in the blessed month but in the blessed month the month that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has praised a lot in his book the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has explained to us the virtues of this blessed days allah azza wa jalla my dear brothers and sisters in islam uh we may not have the opportunity to be in Hajj, but we have opportunity to come with uh, ibadat that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has uh, prescribed for us. Al-a'amalu al-lati tudkhilu aw al-lati tuftahu abu abu sama the deeds that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala always accept, the deed that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we open the doors of the paradise for. Inshallah we're going to count almost 10 of it today. The ibadat that if you and I can come with it Inshallah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will open the doors of his mercy uh, to accept this dua or this ibadah. And other deeds that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala promised us that once you come with it, you will enter paradise. Nothing will stop you from entering paradise. Once you come with this ibadah that inshallah that I'm going to mention, particularly in these blessed days, if you're able to come with any one of these, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has promised us al-jannah. Allah says in Surah Al-Baqarah verse 25, A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytani rajim, wa bashir al-ladhina amanu wa amilu salihat. Allah said, give them good news. Give my people good news. Give my own servant of me. Give them good news. Wa bashir al-ladhina amanu, those who believe in me, those who believe in my messengers, those who believe in my books, those who believe in unseen, those who believe in in everything that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordained us to believe, those who accept Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala totally, those who have conviction in Allah, Allah was talking to them in this ayah, Ya wabashiri ladina amanu, to you that you believe in me, wabashiru, good news for you, wa amilu salihad, those who believe in me and do good deeds, Allah said I should give them good news. What are the news? Allah said is going to provide for them Al Jannah. Once they die, they enter Al Jannah. Al Jannah that Tajiri min Tahtiya Al Anar that the street the stream underneath flows. The Al Jannah that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was talking about underneath stream that flow. Allah promised us that He's going to get, give us this. Khalidina fiya towards the last of that ayah. Say wala fiya azwaju mutahara. 
and all the soul mates, the pure soul mates, all what the heart we desire, we Allah will give it to us in this al jannah wa hum fiya khalidun, and these people they will be there eternal forever once they come with this ibadah. Allah promises us al jannah. Amal to the Khalul Jannah, one of the deeds that you can do to gain Al Jannah, to mention one of it. Number one is Tawheedullah. Tawheedullah Azza wa Jalla. Oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to not associate anything with Allah in worship. Tawheedullah. Allah loved that so much that you know that He is the only one God. No any deity worthy to be worshipped, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala cherish it so much. And he said in the hadith, narrated by Abi Dhari, radiallahu ta'ala, and he said, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, atani ati mi rabbi. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, a messenger came to me from my Lord. A messenger came to me from my Lord, which is Jibreel. For Akhbarani, and he gave me good news. He gave me news. In another narration, Kala Basharani, he gave me good news. And now, Mamata min Umati, whoever dies in my nation, Mamata, whoever died, min Umati in my nation, in my own people, La Yushiriku be La Yushayan. He doesn't associate any partner with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Dakhul al Jannah, he will enter paradise. Straightforward. The Sahaba were shocked when they heard this. Call to this Sahabi, you, Al Jalilu, this great companion, asked the Messenger of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, "Wa in Zanna, wa in Saraka, qala wa in Zanna, wa in Saraka." The man asked, "What about if this man committed illegal sexual act?" Or what about if this man steal money or steal any property? Would he still enter paradise with this? The Prophet said, well, in Zanna, even if he committed illegal act, which he has done the 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 haram, he has committed zina, well, in Saraka, and even he has embezzled money. The Prophet said he will enter paradise once he doesn't associate partner with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. For you to know how much Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala cherish Tawheed, oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, oneness of Him is very important. You and I should try as much as we can do to not allow anything to jeopardize our uh, faith in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. No matter how the calamity, how the distress, sorrow, anything, we should not allow that to affect our faith in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's number one. A hadith reported by Imam Bukhari in his book. That's number one deed that we can do to gain Al Jannah. This direct from the Messenger of Allah. This is a direct message from the Messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, not from anyone, from the Messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala directly. Another deed that we can do, particularly in these blessed days, blessed month, is Qiraatu Ayatul Kursi, reading Ayatul Kursi. The ayah that we all know, the ayat that we all know, Allah, la ilaha illa hu al hayyul qayyum, la ta'khuzuhu sinatun wa la naum, la uma fi samawati wa... To the end, if you can read this ayah, duburu kulli salat at every salat. After every salat, if you can read this ayah, these verses, in Surah Al-Baqarah towards the end, min salawat al-maktuba, after every Prescribe salat if you can come with this. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam assure us al jannah. Let's look at the hadith. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam saying the hadith narrated by Abi Umama al Bahaili al Bahaili radiallahu anhu qala qala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam man qara ayat al kursi whoever read ayat al kursi that we all know. Dubura kulli salatin maktubat after every salat. The salat after every salat that he read this ayah to the kursi with, uh, with, 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 with with tranquility is not rushing in reading it. He read it the way Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants us to read it, one after the other. He doesn't mix up all the letters together. He read it 
fluently as much as he can read. He tried as much as he can read it to come with this ayah, the way it was written, it was read by the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Lam yam la umin duhul il janneti illa le mout. The Prophet Sallallahu said, Nothing will stop him from not gaining paradise. Nothing will stop him from not enter paradise except death. Once you read this, this is a good deed that you can engage yourself in, particularly in these blessed days. After every single salah, make sure that you sit down gently without uh, the, the hasting, rushing. Try to read this ayah to the Kurisi after every salat. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala promise you on the tongue of our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that you shall enter al-jannah. That the reward Allah will give you is al-jannah. Subhanallah. Number three, another ibadah that we can do in this blessed month as well. Salatu ifna ashara ifna ashara raka kulli yawm to come with the 12 nafila every day. Every day to come with 12 nafila after salatu salawatu al-mafrudo after the obligatory salat to come with additional 12 Nafila, which we mentioned last week, hadith reported by uh, Abi Sufyan radiallahu ta'ala anhu, qala, Samitu Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam yakul, I heard a messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, ma min abidin muslimin yusalli lillahi ta'ala kulli yawmi isnata isnatay asharata raka'a tatawwa'an ghayra al-farida illa bana allahu lahu baytan fil jannah aw illa buniya lahu baytun fil jannah rawahu muslim hadith says if any one of you ma min abdi muslim in yusalli lillahi ta'ala no any servant of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that is a muslim and he comes with this 12 nafila after the compulsory salat he comes with this 12 nafila in a day illa bana allahu lahu baytan fil jannah Except Allah to build mansion for you in paradise. Once Allah promised to make you paradise, a big reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is straightforward al Jannah. This is a deed that we can do to get al Jannah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy for every one of us. Another deed that we can do in these blessed days is the uh, uh, number four al Akhlaqu al Hasana the good character, the good behavior, to act to people in according to the ways of Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, to talk to people in a respectful way, to act to people in a, in a good way, to respect each another, to show a good quality, humility, humbleness, dignity, all these are good attitude, all these are good characteristics that Islam, Islam wants you to and I to come with it. So the Prophet said, whosoever can come with this, and Abi Darda radiallahu anhu, and the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, ma min shayin afqalu fi mizan al-mu'min yawm al-qiyamati min husn al-khuliqin. He said on the day of resurrection, nothing will heavier in the scale of human being than husn al-khuliqin, to act in a good way. Good behavior, nothing will weigh over this deed. So, which means good deed is the number one. On the day of resurrection, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give uh, uh, the, uh, the abundant rewards for those who come with the word good behaviors, those who act to people in a good manner, those who respect people, those who show mercy and kindness to people. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam reminded us that he shall enter al-jannah, he shall enter al-jannah free of charge. وَإِنَّ اللَّهَ يُبْغِدُ الْفَاحِشَ الْبَذِيَّةِ Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala dislike, detested al-fahisha, atrocity, al-bavia, immoral act, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't welcome it. So therefore, whoever can come with the good deeds, good characteristics in this blessed month, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala promised him al-jannah which is number four. That's another hadith towards this. Hadith narrated by Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala anhu says, 
سئل رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم سئل رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم the prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم was asked an akfar ma yudkhil an-nas al-janna what are the things what are the deed that can uh, make someone get al-janna what are the deed that if you can come with it most of it will make you get al-janna the prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said taqwa Allah the fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala taqwa Allah azza wa jalla the taqwa Allah azza wa jalla as we know what it, what what it uh, what is the, the it calls the taqwa Allah azza wa jalla al-amal bitanzil to act according to the ways of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his messenger wal qana'atu bil qalil and to have contentment that's what he called taqwa Allah azza wa jalla to act according to the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and wal amal bil qalil wal qana'atu bil qalil and to, to have contentment with what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has provided for you taqwa Allah azza wa jalla we make you gain paradise wa husn al khuluq and good character good behavior wa su'ila nabiy sallallahu alayhi wa sallam aidan the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was asked ma aktharu ma yudkhilu an-nasa an-nara what are the things that most that they are, uh, make someone gain air fire what are the things that mo- that make someone gain air fire faqala the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said al-fam the tongue your mouth wal faruju and your private parts those two things are the things that if care is not taken so we gain air fire through this if someone say alhamdulillah i don't even commit any illegal uh, act i don't do atrocity i don't i make sure i protect my dignity alhamdulillah you don't come with all this but what about alfam your mouth what about alfam your mouth we have to safeguard our tongue we have to protect our tongue the tongue that you see it brings goodness and also it bring bad so you use your, your own tongue huh, to bring goodness to people not to cause harm to uh, other people may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy for every one of us another good is that can uh, uh, give us grant us al jannah on the tongue of our beloved prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam al hirsu ala adai salawat al mafrud for someone striving serving one making sure that he prays salatul uh, five times salat at its appropriate time appointed time by allah subhanahu wa ta'ala inna salata kanat ala al mu'minina kitaban mawquta whoever comes with the salat the compulsory salat at its appointed time every day every day you always come with it the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam says such a person we gain al jannah free of charge the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said in the hadith uh that rabi'at ibn ka'b al aslami qala kuntu abitu ma'a rasulillah sallallahu alaihi wasallam he said i slept in the house of the messenger of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala fa ataituhu bi wadwihi and i gave him the bucket of ablution to make ablution wa hajati and other things that the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam need fa qala li and the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said sal ask what do you want faqultu and i say oh the messenger of allah i want one thing which i believe if you can provide it to me i will be happy the prophet said what do you want he said as'aluka muraf murafaqataka fil jannah as'aluka murafaqataka fil jannah i want to be next to you in al jannah that's the only thing i want in my life and i don't want any other thing i don't want money I don't want wealth. I don't want children. What I want, I want to be next to you in Jannah. Qala aw ghayra dhalik or he said other thing. Qultu wa dhaka. The Prophet said, yes, it is very possible. Qala fa'inni ala nafsika bi kathirati as-sujood. Make sure you always come with sujood. I make sure you always pray your salat, uh, the, the compulsory salat at its appointed time. And in another narration he said to kafiru as-sayyiat this salat as per it you clean up the sins the sin that you have committed this salat will wipe it off 
as said by the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in one narration by uh, Abu Huraira, may Allah be pleased with him, said, as salawatu la khamsu, salatu la khamsu, the five times salat, to another five times salat that you pray regular every day, while Juma to ila Juma, from one Juma to another Juma, wa Ramadan ila Ramadan, from, from one Ramadan to another Ramadan, mukaffirati ma baynahuna, idha ishtanaba li kabairu. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said on the tongue of our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that if you come with all these ibadah that I mentioned, Allah will wipe off your sin, particularly if you distance yourself from the major sins. So this heart, if you are doing it, definitely Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will reward you with al-jannah. May he reward every one of us with the highest place in paradise. Another act that we can do to gain al-jannah, which is the imata to al-adha and itariqi, taking any funds, any things that can harm people, you're taking it from, uh, you're taking it away, anything that can cause danger to people or anything that can harm human beings, you take it away from them, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala promise you al-jannah by doing this. And Abi Huraira radiallahu ta'ala and he said, لَقَدْ يُرَعِيْتُ رَجُلًا يَتَقَلَّبُوا فِي الْجَنَّةِ The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, they made me see a man. يَتَقَلَّبُوا فِي الْجَنَّةِ I saw this man walking up and down in Jannah. I saw him enjoying in, in Jannah. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was the one that said this. فِي الْجَنَّةِ فِي شَجَرَةٍ قَطْعَهَا مِنْ ظَهَرِ الطَّرِيقِ كَانَتِ تُؤْذِي النَّاسَ he said, what did this man did to gain this paradise is that there's a particular tree that always block people's uh, entrance, that always block people from uh, passing. So this man goes to this tree and he cut off the tree. So that people block this man did and he gained paradise, which means that anything that can cause harm to your brother, if you take it away from him, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has assured you of getting paradise on the tongue of our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So these are all the ibadat that we can do. Even if it's only pebble or stone on, on, on the road, maybe you are walking and you see that if someone has stepped uh, his feet on this, it can hurt him. Then you take it away from the, from the road, you shall be rewarded by al-jannah. That's the message of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He said, a man get, get, got al-jannah because of this particular act that most of us underrate, that we don't take serious. We, dis, we, 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 we look at it like this is not a big deal. This is not a big deal that we always look for. But this man gained paradise with this. So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, tariki sorako, taking anything, any harms, any funds, on the road, it's like you are doing charity. By doing charity, you're going to gain al-jannah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward every one of us with al-jannah. Number six is al-ihsanu ila al-banati, to do good to women, goodness to banat, daughters. Wal hirsu ala tariyati hinna wa sabru ali hinna. And to be very patient in dealing with them in the in the in nurturing then the prophet said if you can do this you get al jannah because it is very difficult for you to train girls it is very difficult and it is a big amana because they have a lot of things in them that you supposed to protect them so the prophet said if anyone can come with this act and he, he do it he did it the way allah and his messenger want him to do it he is going to gain al jannah that's narration from our mother Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anya. She said one day, دَخَلَتْ إِمْرَأَةٌ مَاهَا إِبْنَتَانِ لَهَا تَسْأَلُ فَلَمْ تَجِدُ إِنْدِ شَيْئًا غَيْرَ تَمْرَةٍ فَعَطَيْتُهَا إِيَّاهَا Our mother Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anya, she said one day, a woman came to me with her two daughters. This mother, she has suffered a lot. This particular lady, she has suffered a lot. She has nothing to eat. She has nothing to feed her family. 
and she struggled. She's working hard to make sure that she protects her daughters. And our mother said, I don't have anything in my house to give her, but I remember I have only one date. And you know, in Arab then, they love dates so much. Even now, they love dates, and date is part of their food. Any kind of food that you see Arab uh, used to today is just like additional one. So that is not part of their uh, uh, original food. So one of their food is dates. So our mother said, I gave this date to this lady. Well, I'm ta kulminia, but this lady, the mother of these two daughters, refused to eat from it. And the person also said, and then our mother said, this lady stand up for and she left. She doesn't eat from this particular date that I give her. And she cut this date to two parts, two pieces, and give it to her daughters. She doesn't eat from it. She starved herself just because to please her daughters. She didn't eat at lunch. She gave it to her daughters just to please them, just to take care of them, just to maintain them, just to protect them, because she knows that by protecting them, she will gain al Jannah. After this woman left, Fadakala Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam alayhi, alayhi salatu wa sallam alayna fakhbartuhu. Aisha, our mother, radiallahu ta'ala anya said, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam came in and I asked what happened and I narrated the story to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and he said man ubtuliya min adhil banati bi shay'in whoever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has bestowed a female child or a daughters and Allah has test him with hungers, with difficulties uh, uh, with anything if Allah tests your daughters for you maybe they are doing something that you don't like but you are still being patient with them, you're trying to train them on the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, ubtiliya min hadhil banati bi shay'in kunna lahu sitra min nari Despite of the, 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 the what unpleasant that comes from these ladies to you as a mother, despite of the, the unpleasant act, attitude that they are giving to you, you still be patient with them. You still try to give them the good home training. You still try to protect them. You still give feeding, feeding them. You doing all this kind of ibadah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make all this effort to be the uh, barrier for you to enter a fire on the day of resurrection, said by the messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us a golden opportunity, particularly those of us that we have uh, female uh, children, those of us that we don't have... Uh, Female, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us also as well, inshallah. Particularly, the Prophet said, even if it's only one daughter you have and you protect them, nothing happened to them, nothing happened to these, uh, the, these daughters, these kids. Till they get married, you will get reward of Al Jannah. So if anyone has only one daughter and he protect her till the daughter get married, Nothing happened to her. She, he made sure that he protected her, feeding her, do every goodness to her. The person is not assured of the of Al Jannah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make this easy for every one of us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept our ibadah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive our shortcomings. Another act that we can do that can gain, uh, grant us Al Jannah, which uh, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said, it might be difficult for us, but wallahi, if we can try to do it, we gain Al-Jannah. One day, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was admonishing his companions, giving them lecture, talking to them. Then he just pointed towards the door, the entrance there. He said, Sayyid Khul, Sayyid Khul Rajulun Min Hadha Al-Bab. Iman, we enter through this door. Sayyid Khul Rajulun Min Hadha Al-Bab. Iman, we enter through this door. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam repeated it again. And the Sahaba, the one who they were waiting to see who is going to come. They are eager to see who is going to come through this door. Some of them are even thinking, like, oh, it's going to be Abu Bakri, of course. Everybody knows that Abu Bakri is number one among the Sahaba. Some think it could be Omar, because Omar also is the in law of Prophet, and he also has a, 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 a 
high rank among the Sahaba. Some say, no, it could be Uthman, radiallahu ta'ala. Some say it could be Ali. Some say it could be Abdurrahman ibn Awf, that he always spend his money because of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that he always finance uh, the, the, the needy people. He always do good deeds. So Sahaba, they were thinking, who could be this person? Anyway, they are eager to see the person. Fortunately, a man just came in, a man that they never expect. They never expected that person to come in. They never think of him. They don't even know him uh, among themselves. They don't uh, regard him as, uh, as, as a high-respected uh, person among them. They don't disrespect him, but it is not the kind of person they are expecting. So when they saw this man, he sat down, and after this man done with his mission, he left. So they were looking at him. This man, yeah, he's going to get the certificate of al -Jana. The Prophet has assured him of al -Jana because whoever the Prophet has assured al -Jana definitely is going to get it. So the Sahaba, they were looking like, what kind of ibadah this man could have done that make him get this golden opportunity? Abdullah ibn Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu, the beloved son of Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu, may Allah be pleased with both of them. His father was so strong when it comes to practicing of Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And when it comes to adhering to the teaching of Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Abdullah ibn Umar is number one there. To the point that every single act that Abdullah ibn Umar radiallahu ta'ala had that the messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala practiced, he makes sure he practiced 90% of it. He makes sure he always do. Even if it's something that is not even uh, uh, compulsory, Abdullah ibn Umar will make sure that he comes with it. That is his own quality. So when he saw this man, he asked for his permission. May I come with you? May I sleep, sleep over in your house? I just want to have a couple of this with you. And the man welcome Abdullah ibn Umar. Okay, let's go together. When he got to the house of this man, Abdullah ibn Umar radiallahu ta'ala knew as his job, supervisor, to watch what kind of ibadah this man has done that the Prophet make and announce his name in public that is among the passengers of paradise. So Abdullah ibn Umar watched this man. He prays his salat, the normal way they pray their own salat. He watched this man fasting, also the normal way. And he saw this man sleeping also. So he doesn't see any strange, anything strange in this man, Ibadah, in this man uh, worship. He doesn't see anything strange. He see that this man is very nice to people. Yes, this, they also, they are nice to people. And he tried to watch this man at night. Maybe this man will take most of his night to do tahajjud. But when he woke up, he just saw that this man just taking some of his time to do tahajjud. He's not using all his time to do tahajjud. He just... And Abdullah ibn Umar ta'ala was like thinking like, what kind of ibadah this man always do that make him get this al-jannah? Because he hasn't seen anything strange in his ibadah. Everything that this man has been doing, even to him, he has done what is bigger than this man, Ibada. So when he could not see anything, when he couldn't see anything that this man has done that could uh, drive him or that could motivate him to say, wow, you deserve this paradise. So he questioned this man with respect. Oh, my dear uh, brothers, my dear brother, uh, as you know me, I, I seek for your permission to come to your house uh, to sleep in your house. But my intention is to watch you. I don't come for any other reason than to watch your ibadah. But when I see all the ibadah that, the ibadah that you have done so far, I realize that most of it uh, is like, it's like a, uh, it's not up to what I do. It's not even up to what other sahaba also do in the ibadah. So I want to know what particular job you always do that make you gain al -Jannah. Please, can you tell me? And this man said, oh, I don't have any particular ibadah that I do. The only thing I could realize that before I go to bed, before I go to bed, I always make sure to think from morning, my movement from morning to night, and I make sure that I don't have any grudges against anyone. I don't hold any grudges against anyone. That's the only thing I realize. I never hold grudges. Even if I have anything, before I go to bed, I make sure that it disappears in my heart. I never sleep over on the, on someone, uh, all the grudges against someone in my heart. 
that is not my own nature. Whatever you might have, you might have done to, to me, I always forgive you. I pardon you, I overlook you. Even if it is something that is annoying, but I look at it as a, what you are just a test to me in my life. And when they went back to Professor Hassan, they say to him, he said, yes, that is the ibadah that this man did that make him to gain al-Jannah. My dear brothers and sisters in faith, this is a big opportunity for you and I if you can come with it instead of us holding grudges against people. How many of us, we have some people that over two years, three years, they still holding grudges against each other within our mosque, within our community, even within family member. Some people have swearing, they're taking an oath, never in my life. Even if I die, I don't want to see such person in, uh, in, in my barrier uh, arrangement. I don't want him. I don't want her. Upon what? Upon what? And if they ask you what is the reason behind this, you will see that it's an irrelevant or it's not a cogent reason to hold grudges against someone. As a human being, at least, at least, if it has oh, three days maximum, just forgive the person for the sake of Allah. And you know that forgiving them doesn't mean that, oh, uh, you downgrade yourself or you put yourself so low, but you use that person to practice, using him to climb a ladder, using that person to gain reward. You should know that that person in your life is just a, it's a test from Allah to you. It could be from your family. It could be your son. It could be your daughter. It could be your father. It could be your mother. The Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will use as a test for you that it will be your enemy. But do you have to the, 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 cut the, 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 the relationship? You, you have to cut your relation, your, your relationship with them totally because of this? No. The only thing that can make you cut off the family bond is that if that person it really comes with atrocity, all the things that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his messenger prohibited all time, and you have tried enough to correct the person, but you never listen, you never uh, take correction. The only thing you can just do like let him stay on his lane. But your own duty to him, you still do it to, if he needs your help, if you can do it, give it to him. But you're not going to do the help that will make him uh, engage in bad act. Or you're not going to give him money that he is going to spend in, the, in, in a haram. That's the only thing you're not going to do with him. But for you to cut the family bond totally, that means you are cutting the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala out of your life. Because there is a, a narration from that, from the messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that the family bond, by cutting them, it means you are cutting the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from your life. So my dear brothers and sisters in faith, it is very difficult, but if you can come with this, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala assure you, al jannatu al firdaus Look at the life of Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he has all these people in his life. From his own family, he has an enemy from them. They want to kill him. They want to hurt him. Even we have some Sahaba that before they embrace Islam, they were enemy of the Prophet ﷺ. We have uh, among them that he wanted to kill the message of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala before he became a prophet, a, a, a Sahabi, a companion. We have some of them that he always wished the Prophet was some bad thing in his life. We have some of them that they antagonize him, they victimize the messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but after they became the prophet, uh, the sahaba, the companions, the prophet of Islam welcomed every one of us, every one of them. He doesn't hold any grudges against any one of them. He forgives them for the sake of Allah. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, tubu ilallahi tawbatan asuh, repent. Today, it is an opportunity for you. Tomorrow may be too late. You have an opportunity, particularly this blessed days. Repent to those who ever has done uh, the, the wrong things, uh, something wrong to you, forgive them for the sake of Allah. Forgive them. Forgive them for the sake of Allah. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive every one of us. Lastly, another deed that we can do to gain al Jannah, which uh, uh, was reported uh, by Abu Hurairah in his own narration, narrated by Abu Hurairah, may Allah be pleased with him, said, in one day, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa with some sahaba also as well, and he was asking them this question. Man asbaha minkum al yawma so iman. Do we have anyone among us that is fasting today? And every one of them keeps silent because they are not fasting. Faqala Abu Bakri anan. Abu Bakri raised up his hand and said, I'm fasting today. 
Fakola Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continued, Faman tabi aminkum aliyawma janazatan. Do we have any one of us, anyone among us that follow the funeral ceremony, that participated in uh, funeral ceremony? Do we have anyone among us? All of them also keep silent, except Abu Bakri. Fakola Abu Bakri, Anna. Abu Bakri said, I participated also. I did this today. Fakola Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, do we have anyone among us that has fed the needy, the poor among us, among us today? Everybody keeps silent. It's only Abu Bakr radiallahu ta'ala and if I call Anna Ya Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, it's only him that be able to come with this thing. Fakola Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, do we have anyone that has visited a sick today? And everybody are silent also as well. They were silent. Fakola Abu Bakri Anna Abu Bakri said, I did this also today. Four ibadah, four different ibadah in a day. So Abu Bakri said, I came with this, I did all this. Fakola Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa Ma ishtama'ana fi miri illa dakhala li janna. Ma ishtama'ana fi miri illa dakhala li janna. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, no one will come with all this ibadah. No servant of Allah will come with all this ibadah in a day except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to reward him with al-jannah. So my dear brothers and sisters in faith, if it is not possible for us to come with all this ibadah in a day, but let us try as much as possible, whichever we can do. Fasting is there. We are in the month of fasting. Month, month of fasting that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has promised us that is the best days to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the beloved days to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are uh, these days. So let's take these days to fast for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, particularly Yawm Arafah, the day that those who went for Hajj, we climbed the mountain of Arafah in devotion to the Lord Azza wa Jalla, in worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This particular day, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has um, uh, told us that he's going to expire the past and the previous sin. And also that particular day is the day that Allah will free people from fire. That particular day is the day that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will free the slave. That particular day is the blessed day that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has put barakah in it. And also we are luckily to have this ibadah uh, uh, fall into another day that is uh, a special day to, to us, which is first day. That's a, a fasting on first day before. And Yawm Arafah also fall onto this day. And Yawm al Juma on Friday will be there on eight. Also, it's a day of barakah. So imagine if you take this opportunity to fast on this particular day, to devote uh, yourself to in worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to come with a different kind of ibadat, salat, fasting, uh, sadaqah, good, uh, the uh, goodness, good things to pe do good things to people and uh, free those who are in bondage, give food to those who are in those who are need in need of your food, give them all this thing. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, we use it to give you al jannah. We pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant every one of us al jannah al fridas. We pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept our ibadah. We pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive our shortcomings. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, let us try to work hard. Let us try to work hard to attain this uh, uh, position in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us uh, this opportunity to come with it. My dear brothers and sisters in faith, it is not easy because the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has said it in one of the, is a, the a hadith narrated by Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala and he said, Hujibatu, Hujibati naru bi shahawat. The air fire that you see, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when he created it, he surrounded the air fire with what the soul de desire, what the soul like. Like something like position, love, uh, love of money, love of children, lo love of prestige, honor, glory, all this kind of thing. Goods and silver, it is being surrounded by air fire. So it always drives us, come and take me, come and take me. If care is not taking, it will drive some, it will drive someone to a fire. And the Prophet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala surrounded Al Jannah with the things that the heart dislike, the things that is difficulty, 
for so the things that if you don't have fear of Allah, if you don't attain particular portion in piety, you will not be able to come with it. Be, if someone can wake up and pray to Hajjud, that no one wake him up, he takes his time to wake up by himself, 20 minutes, 15 minutes, for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, at the time that everybody are enjoying their sleeping, he doesn't sleep this moment. He used that particular time to talk to his Lord. That moment is very difficult for him to wake up, but just because the love of his creator, that he wants to meet his Lord, that he has it in his heart, that he wants to see his Lord, he wants to contact his Lord. So he wake up, he force himself, even though that may not be convenient for him, but he has to fight his partner, which is a shaitan. Like, I will be like a shaitan, I must wake up for Tahaji today, and he'll be able to come with all these things. All these things are not uh, easy to give, to work hard day and night, make money, and out of your money, giving in charity. This thing is not easy to continue to strengthen the family bond. And all your family, they could be your enemy, or they don't even want to see you, or they even be the one that they even want to kill you. But the Prophet said, despite of this, don't cut your relationship with them. So all this kind of thing is very difficult. That is what Allah surrounded with Al-Jannah. But Allah promised us that if we try as much as possible to do all these things, and we die on it, we shall enter Al-Jannah to al -Furidaus. We pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant every one of us Al-Jannah. We pray to Allah to accept our ibadah and forgive our shortcomings. We pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to preserve us, to witness the upcoming uh, Eid al-Akbar on the earth. We pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, to grant uh, Shifa to those who are sick among us. We pray, we pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give them a quickly recovery. We pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive our shortcomings. All our departed so we pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to admit them in paradise. We pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive their shortcoming. May he count every one of, every one of us <coughs> among the good followers of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. I pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive our shortcomings. May he elevate us in Iman. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make our family, our children, the goodness of our eyes. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy for every one of us to keep shining in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to continue strengthening us in the Iman. May he continue strengthening every one of us, us in the Iman. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala enrich us in wealth. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala enrich us in wealth. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala increase us in afiyat wa salam fi dunya wa la akhirah. Bi rahmatika ya rahma rahimi. Subhanaka la umma bihamdik. Asharu an la ilaha ila anta. Astaghfiruka wa tubulik. Amin. Uh, we don't know if anyone has a question before we